So most coaches think that the goal of your website is to sell people on coaching. And that's not true. The goal of your website is to have people sell themselves to you. And the way that you do that is through your application. So you might be wondering, what do I include on my coaching application in order to have people come into those free consults primed to buy my coaching? And how do I weed out the people who are never going to invest in my coaching anyway? That's what we're going to dive into in today's video. Let me take you behind the computer and I'm going to show you the application that I just created for my new fitness business. Let's do it. Okay, so you can see here the apply page for my fitness coaching business, Enough Fitness. If you wanna look on your own, you can go to enoughfitness.com slash apply. I'm gonna walk you through why I did everything the way I did it on this page so that you can adapt it to your own business and your own niche. So on the headline, apply for your free strategy session below, it's very important that you don't have a long work with me page where you're trying to sell them on the coaching. If you do strategy sessions or free consults, just sell them on the free consult. Go one step at a time and then use the free consult to sell the coaching. If you try to talk too much about your program, all it's gonna do is have people feel like, oh, well, this isn't right for me for, for X or Y reason. And the goal of your website isn't to sell your coaching, it's to get them on the phone with you. That's what sells high-end coaching engagements. So you'll see here I have step one, step two, step three. It's very helpful if on your website and when you're marketing, you can give people a very clear outline of what to expect. It helps them feel comfortable and it helps them take action. So for me, I say step one is you fill out this application form. Step two is if you, uh, if you qualify, you'll get an email from me. You can schedule a time through that. And step three is we have our strategy session. You'll get clear on these things. If it seems like I can help you, I'll talk about what that would look like. I also have a note here telling them what I'm looking for in the application. So I basically, I give them the answers to the test, right? So I don't feel bad if they fill out the application and these things aren't in place. They don't seem motivated, coachable, and willing to invest. I don't respond or I respond and say, hey, it doesn't seem like we're a good fit because I'm telling them exactly what I'm looking for in the application right here. Um, so let's dive into the application itself. So the first question is, there's their name. You don't wanna start the application with really long fill in the blanks. We need to build some momentum, make it easy for them to get started. So I have email, I have their phone number in case they don't respond to the follow-up email I send, I can always call them. I also asked how they heard about the business. So I have a bunch of options here. This helps later in your marketing when you wanna know where should I double down because you'll know where your clients are actually coming from and you can do more of those things. I asked uh, who referred them if, if they chose referral. That way I can create those relationships, build those relationships and give them some positive reinforcement by thanking them for sending that person along. I also asked their current and target weight. You're gonna have to adapt this to your niche. Uh, you might not be in the fitness niche. So for example, if you're in the business niche and in my other business, gregfaxon.com, I've asked things like, what's your current monthly income? What's your target monthly income? If you're in the relationship niche, you could ask, you know, how many dates did you go on last month? But we need to get some numbers to get a sense of how big of a gap there is. Because if there's a small gap, so for example, if they only need to lose five pounds, they're much less likely to hire me than if they need to lose 30 or 40 pounds, right? That's a bigger gap. It's a bigger problem to solve and people are willing to invest more to solve bigger problems. I also asked what they're hoping that I can help them achieve if we agree to work together. And notice the wording here um, is not needy. It's basically saying, hey, you're filling this application out. What do you think that I can help you achieve if I agree to work with you? And this starts the process of reframing what's actually happening. I'm not selling myself to them. They're having to sell themselves to me as a client and they're almost trying out for me. So you can see how that changes the power dynamic and changes the relationship when we go into the sales call. Uh, ask what their biggest obstacle is to hitting those goals and, and to be honest, and that's something that we'll dive deeper into in the call, but it starts to give me a sense of their level of awareness of the problem. Uh, ask how much they're willing to invest in their health and fitness. There's two ways to do this. You can either do a multiple choice like I did here, and obviously if they don't choose the one that your service costs, then that would disqualify them. You can also have just two options and say, you know, right now are you able to invest in your business or in your fitness, or are you not able to invest and you're just looking for free help? And obviously if they choose the second one, uh, that would disqualify them as well. 
I also have a question here around coachability. So you're gonna have to adapt this to your niche. For me, I say, if your coach advised you to get rid of all the unhealthy food in your house, would you follow that? Would you be hesitant? Would you talk to your partner first? Would you avoid it at all costs? So I have a similar thing, you know, in my current business when I help coaches get clients, I say, hey, if your coach advised you to put an offer out on social media offering free sessions, what would you do? You know, would you avoid it because you feel like you don't have a following and you don't want to put yourself out there yet? Would you just trust the process? Right? What would you do? And if someone says they're going to avoid it at all costs, they're obviously not a ideal client. And so that would disqualify them again. And then final question I have on a scale of one to 10, how motivated are you to reach your fitness goals as soon as possible? And then I just inserted some personality here, which is always a good thing to do on your application is start to show some of your personality. And uh, that's what has people buy coaching. It's not just the logistics and the results they're hoping they're, they'll get, it's that they feel connected to you. So I have you know zero on the scale is Netflix and chill, 10 is deadlift and grill. Um, so if they don't choose a 10, it disqualifies them. I know that sounds extreme, but I know from hundreds of applications in my uh, business at gregfaxon.com that when people choose anything less than a 10 in motivation, they typically do not convert. Okay, it's not always true, but 99% of the time for me, uh, and that's enough for me to, to not waste my time with the others, um, it is true, they need to choose a 10 out of 10. If they show hesitancy, it probably means they're not quite ready or they don't quite trust you yet, or all these different things that it could mean, but you're looking for a 10 out of 10, okay? And then obviously they can submit, and when they submit, I have a thank you page uh, with kind of a funny, you know, gif that just, you know, again, shows my personality and tells them what to expect next. Okay, so once they fill this out, if they're a fit, I reach out with an email, give them a link to my calendar, and we have the session. But that is how you put together an application that qualifies people and makes them try out for you. Okay, doesn't make you be the one chasing the client. Don't go overboard with questions, only include the questions that are absolutely relevant and are going to give you information that you need because the more questions you have, the less likely people are to finish and submit the application. Hope that was helpful and good luck on putting your application together. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you haven't already done so, go over to gregfaxon.com, click the big button on the home screen to download my 21 ways to find potential coaching clients. It's a great you know, two or three page cheat sheet that just gives you a sanity check and make sure you haven't missed anywhere obvious where you could find high paying clients for your coaching business. All you have to do is enter your email address. I'll send it along to you. You can make sure you haven't missed anything. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk next week.